Now, their, their picture right up here on this poster. Can all of you see it? Can all of you see the poster up here? Okay. Now, think about that for a minute. Think about six traditional surf sports that Native Hawaiians did and see if you could even list them in your head. The most obvious one, uh, which Miley identified, is Heinalo, right? Which is surfing. And just real quick for you Hawaiian language speakers, Hei means to slide in Hawaiian, and Nalo, of course, is wave. So when the Hawaiians say Heinalo, what they're saying is wave sliding, what we call surfing. So for my example for Heinalo, I use the photo that's up there on the top left. And it's not a real spectacular surf shot, yeah? As far as you know, the magazines today and all of the high-powered movies we see. and It looks just pretty average. It's a woman on a surfboard. But the reason I used her is that she's pure Hawaiian. And her name is Vai Makua. Um, her brother was a very well-known beach boy, canoe person, um, surfer in Waikiki called Blue, Blue Makua. And that's his sister Vai. But anyway, there's almost no pictures at all anywhere that have survived or that were taken of Native Hawaiian women surfing, and that's one. So I put that photo in the book. I thought it was important. And that's also something that I do document in the book very carefully, is that Native Hawaiian women were the equals of men in surfing. They surfed just as much, just as often, and they were just as good as the men were. And that shows up all through the Hawaiian language writings um, that are in here. So, and the reason I did that, uh, one of the reasons I really made a point of that is because I've been asked, as a surf historian, I've been asked by a lot of people, did Hawaiian women surf? Was it only a sport for the elite? Was it only a sport for the men? And the answer, of course, is no, it wasn't. And so I use Vai up there as, as one of my examples. Okay, so Heinalo is, is sport number one. Now if we drop down right below her, um, you see that girl coming through um, coming through the wave in the shore break? Where is that? Anybody recognize that spot? No, not Makua, but that's a good guess. You got the brown mountain in the background, you're right. Sandy Beach, that's Sandy Beach shore break. And of course, that's where all the kids body surf nowadays too, right? Anyway, um, I, I put her again in there because it shows a woman, a woman body surfing. And body surfing in traditional Hawaiian, in traditional Hawaiian culture actually goes all the way back to the goddess Hi'iaka, who was a sister of Pele. And Hi'iaka was an excellent body surfer. And those of you who have ever run across Puke and Novo Meyer's book, um, the epic tale of Hi'iaka, Ikapolio Pele. Um, you'll see that there, she's in there. There's even a, a block print of her body surfing. So women body surfing all the way back to Hawaiian legend, all the way back to the beginnings of Hawaiian culture. So that's why she's in there. She's, a, she's actually a body surfing champion in the Sandy Beach body surfing uh, contest. Okay. The next, the next sport down below, I don't know if you guys can see, but it looks like a guy on a bodyboard, just a regular Mori Boogie bodyboard, right? But he's actually riding a small wooden board, similar to this one here, to my left. This is one of my boards, and I ride this one. In fact, I was riding it this morning out in Waikiki. That's why it still has wax on it. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, so our, our third, our third uh, traditional Hawaiian sport is actually bodyboarding. But of course, they didn't have foam, right? They had wood. And this sport is actually made out of two woods, uh, two native woods that the Hawaiians used. Um, it's made out of willy willy, which is the light colored wood. And willy willy is really light. It's really soft and it's like a balsa wood. It's like a native Hawaiian balsa. And that was a very popular surfboard wood because it was light. The, the, the darker stringers in the board are koa. And that's what most of the Hawaiian surfboards were made out of, whether they were big or small. So we made a, a, a friend of mine, I designed the board and got the wood, and then a friend of mine uh, put that together for me. So willy willy with koa stringers, uh, all made of Hawaiian wood. 
So that's pipo, and that's what the Hawaiians were writing for short boards, small boards. They were writing little boards like these. This one is even smaller. This is a, fr a picture of a friend of mine. Um, his name's Sean Ross, and Sean was writing a pipo board back in the 1970s at the pipeline. So Sean was a lifeguard at the pipeline, and remember now, this is pre foam body boards, so we only had the wood back then. That's Sean coming through the barrel at the pipeline on a wooden body board. No fins, I mean no fins on the board, only fins on his feet. So if Sean could do it, could the Native Hawaiians have done it? Of course they could, and they did. And that's in here. They actually say in the Hawaiian language newspapers that they're catching waves, they're getting in the barrel, they're disappearing, they're coming out. All of that stuff right in there in the Hawaiian language. Nobody's seen that before. Nobody's documented that before. So anyway, that's our third, our third uh, traditional Hawaiian surf sport there, bodyboarding, paipo'o, as they knew it. Okay, up here on the top right, that's another sandy beach shot. Now all of you probably recognize what she's doing. Um, she's riding a skim board, as we know it today. And all of you have seen skimmers, right? You know, they run down the beach, drop that thin little board, hop on it, and they go just shooting across the beach. I mean, Kailua, Kailua Shorebreak, they're all over the place. And people even skim on the, on the foam body boards today, too. They skim on those. But anyway, um, did the Hawaiians tri do that on, on their small pipe of boards? I'm not sure, because I never ran across a reference for it. But I do know this that Hawaiians skim by running down the beach and skimming on their chests. Have any of you ever seen that? Have any of you ever seen anybody do that? Did you do it? Yeah, Eugene Kalpiko was a famous For skimming on his chest. Yeah. Where, where did you see Eugene Kalpiko do that? Kuhio, Kuhio Beach, right. So anyway, that's what Native Hawaiians did. They did heione, which means sand sliding, or skimming as we call it today. But they would wait for the wave to come up the beach, and then as the wave receded, they would just start running. And then they would literally make a dive, just like you're diving into a pool. You dive with your hands out in front of you, but you use your hands kind of as a springboard. You hit with your hands, and you push, and that just scoots you right onto the receding wave and you skim across the beach only with your body. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know if women did it, but anyway, <laughs> anyway the men did. And I, I, I talked to, um, I talked to Kavika, Kapahulehua. Do you folks recognize his name? Kavika was the first skipper on the Hokulea. And he spent his uh, childhood on Niihau. And he, he remembers the Nihau. In fact, he did it as a child at Nihau, so that, that, was, that helped to document no that. Of any kind, just no. To. So the, there you go, there's someone who's done it, and I have too. You can do it on grass, it's wet to you. Yikes. <laughs> did you hear that? People do it on grass on, when they're sweating? Grass. When the grass is wet, okay. But anyway, um, Maybe some of you have heard of a more recent surfer, Buffalo, Buffalo Kealana out in Makaha. Buffalo was one of the best skimmers without a board, just on his chest. And all the kids out in Waianae did it because the beaches are nice and steep out there. You know, the waves would come up on a big day and then they'd recede and the kids would just run after and dive on them. So anyway, skimming on the boards, skimming on the skim boards, uh, that all came later. Now. I'll throw one more thing in on the skimming because I mentioned this in the book. When the hotels came to Waikiki, the Hawaiians who were skimming, sand sliding as they called it back then, they, they came up with a real novel aspect of sand sliding. They got mattress covers or pillowcases from the hotels. They would fill them with air, catch air, you know, like a, like a balloon, and then they would skim on top of the inflated Pillow, pillowcase. Have you guys seen that? Have you ever seen it? Have you heard of it? I have photographs. In fact, um, I used to be a Sandy Beach lifeguard and the, and the bag riders, as they call themselves, they used to come out there and skim with their pillowcases at Sandy Beach. And they got so good, they got so good that they would actually swim the pillowcase out into the shore break 
and catch waves on the inflated pillowcase and ride the waves in. And I have a PowerPoint presentation that I didn't bring, of course, today, but um, I actually have photos of the bag riders riding waves, skimming across the beach, the whole deal. But that happened because Hawaiians who were just, you know, into doing sports, wave riding sports, got innovative. And this thing spread. It spread out to Waianae, it spread out to the windward side. And, I, and uh, all of the servicemen that were here during World War II, they started uh, riding it too because they were in the barracks. They had the, they had the mattress covers for their, their uh, mattresses in the barracks. And they would take the mattress covers and skim. And this was going on a, a lot out in Waianae. So a little variation on the theme there that, that kind of came and went. Um, you don't see the bag riders anymore. Okay, so that's number five. That's our number five wave riding sport. Uh, I'm sorry, that's number four. Um, number five is here, and everybody knows this. We all know the famous surf spot in Waikiki called Canoes. And um, this is in Canoes in Waikiki. That's a pretty good sized wave. But that's, that's a spot in Waikiki called Castles. And Castles is a big wave break. It breaks like almost a mile offshore. And Castles is a spot where the Duke, Duke Kahanamoku, made his famous ride. Duke took off at Castles, and he, and this is like in the uh, you know 1930s. He actually rode away from Castles a mile out, all the way into where his statue is now. He ended up right there in front of the Duke statue on Waikiki Beach. So um, Castles is a real famous spot. Um, people still surf it till this day. So. You all know Fred Hemmings? You've heard of our famous senator, Fred? Okay, that's Fred in the back of that canoe steering that four-man canoe, that four-person canoe. And then he's got a couple guys in front of him and one surfer taking off next to him, castles in Lucky Key. So that's five. That's five wave riding sports that traditional Hawaiians did. Now the last one, this is the one that surprises most people and it surprised me because I didn't know that Hawaiians were river surfers. I didn't know it until I started researching this book. And then I started finding all of these references to He'e Pu'e Wai, which is the Hawaiian name for river surfing. The He'e again is sliding. The Pu'e in this instance means agitated, like you know, agitated water. And the Y of course is water. So it's important that you see that they're using Y here for you Hawaiian language speakers and not Kai. They're saying that we're surfing in agitated fresh water. In other words, a raging river. Okay, so anyway, I found all of these references to native Hawaiians river surfing in the 1800s. And they're doing it not only here at Waimea Bay where the kids still do it today, they're doing it on three other islands. They're doing it on Kauai, they're doing it on Maui, they're doing it on the big island. So, so anyway, I got a hold of the lifeguards. I got a hold of the lifeguards out of Waimea Bay. I know a couple of those guys out there. And one of them had been taking pictures of river surfing, the kids river surfing out there in Waimea for years. He gave me his, his, all his photos and said, pick what you want. So this was one. And what's happening right here is that the ocean is that away to your left. You can see that there's a sandbank, sandbank here, sandbank there. And Waimea Falls Park is back up the river this way. Does that make sense to all of you? You're all a little familiar with Waimea? Okay. So what happens is you see the you see the crew of guys up there on the on the beach. Those are the guys that opened up the river mouth. And if you look really carefully, you'll probably have to come up after I'm through and take a look. You can see all of their shovels stuck in their sand. So when, there, when there's a lot of water and it fills up the river, uh, fills up the beach behind you know, the, the sand, these guys come with their shovels, they dig a little trench, and then they start the river flowing. And then once the river starts to flow, of course, it just cuts right, you know, right down to the ocean. Then they get their bodyboards. This guy is on a, a bodyboard. They stand on the side on the riverbank and these stationary waves start to form. And they just stand there and they dive into the wave. And they, and they surf this breaking stationary wave. And the ride usually lasts for about a minute 
to two minutes, and then it just fades away, and then they either wash into the ocean or they get out on the side, and then they come back and wait for another stationary wave. It lasts for about an hour before all of the water, before the, you know, the, um, the stream actually widens the channel and then it all just settles down. So they, they have about an hour to ride the stationary waves and then it all calms down. The river water has all expended itself. And then the guys just wait for the surf to build the barrier back up and for the water to stop piling the back again. And if the surf is big enough and if there's enough rain inland, um, you can actually river surf a couple days in a row. So that, those are the six. And again, I found, I found references now to river surfing on four islands that Native Hawaiians are doing. They're doing this. They're doing this, surfing in rivers on stationary waves, just like they're out there riding all of those regular waves. Just totally surprised me, really did. So anyway, those are the six sports that I wrote about in the book. Those are the six traditional Hawaiian surf sports that, that I documented, that I found. And one of the things that I believe, um, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that every surf sport that's done in the world today has its foundation in these six sports. So if you guys can think of a surf sport now that's done anywhere in the world, here in Hawaii, any place, you know, Australia, France, wherever it is people surf nation, uh, worldwide, that doesn't have a foundation in one of these sticks, I don't know what it is. Anybody want to take a shot? Anybody got any idea?